Hello everyone, it's Chrissy here from the Creative Eclectic. Hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Um, I am hoping that I've got everything all lined up right today. I discovered why my thing was so zoomed in last week. I had my camera on my stand the wrong way. Anyway, hope you're having a great day and we'll just wait a couple of minutes and see who's watching okay and if you're watching from home um, please feel free to share this with video with your friends so it's been a big day today um, I Steve after work was um, doing some paving and it's looking pretty good and my friend Carol came over and helped me with a few bits and pieces for retreat and I got to see my friend Vicky and talk to my friend Kim and um, yeah it's been a really great day yeah so anyway we um, We'll just wait a couple of minutes and see who's watching. If you're watching, be sure to comment and say hello. So I know that I'm not just talking to thin air. Um, I think I've almost got my camera angles right, but maybe not. Okay. So today we're um, exploring some masking so it's um that's one of my favorite things and ironically my friend vicky she explored marking masking on her facebook live last night and it wasn't planned that we both were doing the same thing but the other thing that um we're doing is we're looking at the Easter Bunny stamp set and the Easter Bunny punch. Now these are in the mini catalog. So um, I'm not sure who's watching me. I can't see any comments just yet. Um, so these are in the mini catalog, the Stamping Up mini catalog on page 52. And so we're using the Easter Bunny bundle, which so when you bundle a stamp set and a punch, you um, save 10% on the value of it. So, oh, hi Jody, lovely to see you. I hope you're considering my decorating ideas. You need flamingos in that room. <laughs> or lots of stamping up colors. So anyway, so tonight we're playing with this bundle, but we're also playing with um some masks and so the masks are oh, look i haven't even used this yet so i haven't unpacked it oh your son moved out oh, oh i didn't even know this was a photopolymer stamp i didn't even look at it i just grabbed the first stamp that i came across and some ink and oh your son moved out oh yeah, it's my daughter moved out, but I haven't done anything to her room yet. Um, except remove the air conditioning unit and put in ducted air conditioning. So I haven't done too much with hers yet. Okay, so let's have a look at these mask thingies. Um, yes. Um, so, it's got... There's a... Far, uh, yeah, five masks in the um, set, and these are from the annual catalog, and these are called Artistic Mix um, um, Decorative Masks. Oh, Jody, don't worry about him being thirty-one. I um, moved back home when I was 30 and to my parents and then moved out again when I was 31 so I can see <laughs> that why he would do that. Um, so these are really great masks. 
so I'm going to show you how to use these on a little project and they're not they're a little bit more than what they seem okay so what we're going to need for the first part of our project we'll be using these two masks and you're probably thinking why are you using two trust me okay so who else is watching today i can't see anyone else is watching it looks like we've got a few people so make sure you say hello um and so i've got my card base which is shimmery white i've also got a, a layered piece and i've got my top card so and i'm I'm also going to show you a trick where it's not a card. The other thing that you'll need and is some masking tape. All right, so this needs to be one that doesn't, isn't going to rip your paper. Um, and, you know, just the almost painter's tape, but not quite. And mine's because someone was helping me and they tore the edges and I'm going to blame my husband for that um yeah it's not sticking right so then and you don't want it too tacky so what you want to do is just rub it on your clothes rub that sticky side on your clothes so it's not too tacky so the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some blending brushes so I we're starting with a green, so I I have the bit um, normal size blending brushes, but if you wanted to, you could use the new mini ones. And look at this great little blending brush stand my dear friend gave me as a pillow gift at um, on stage. So, but you don't need a blending brush in every colour. I, because I do classes, I have a lot of blending brushes for each colour like light green and dark green but you can just rub it off and clean it really easily the first thing we're going to do is get a bit of our masking tape and we're going to just roll it up underneath and stick it you might have a, your own private class again tonight Jody, if no one else comes yep so we're going to just stick it to the back of our shimmery white right and so what that does is it just prevents your mask from moving I've got a piece of scratch paper that I'm using and my desk is awfully crowded today so um, then I'm going to grab my um, first mask and I'm just going to line that up with where I think it might sit. Now, I will just line it up on the bottom here. So you can see where this edge is. I will line that up with the edge of my paper. And I'll line that one side up. So it doesn't matter about the other side. It's, and this is why we have scratch paper as well. So I grab my mask. Again, just attach it to my clothes for a second to make it, or over my hands to make it sticky. My masking tape. And then I'm just going to stick it across the top right, of my scratch paper. Right. So what that will do is just make sure it doesn't move. And if you want to put a little bit on the end or the bottom corner, go right ahead. Right, so don't make sure it's not covering the top of your cardstock that you want to be masking on. All right, then we're going to grab our. We're starting with our light green, so this is soft sea foam, and we're going to just ink that up so nice circular motion some people hold their blending brushes like this some people hold it like that it just depends how you're comfortable right people tell you 
say tap it on the side but because I'm coming off from the side I'm not going to worry about that and I'm just going to gently mask um, put my blending brush over the whole thing all right some people tap it like this it doesn't really matter you work out a way that works for you okay um, and I know that I don't want it nice and even okay I want it to look a bit higgledy piggledy or maybe rustic's probably the better word so then I'm just um when I know that I've got all my bits of mass, um, bits blended and go back and forth and side to side, okay, we're then going to get this other mask and we're going to lay it directly over the top, okay. So we're doing a, a monochrome coloured card and again we're going to grab our tape and this is what they're designed to do right we're going to grab our tape and we stick it down oops i'm going to stick it down i'm lining up the bottom edges right the, so this left hand side making it sure that it's as straight as you can sort of see in this light <laughs> right and again I'm going to because it's on top of the other one it might be a little bit slippery so I'm just going to put a little bit of masking tape down the bottom if you can see that and so what that does is it just keeps it from slipping all right so again ink up our Think now you could do a darker colour. Now I'm going over this now and just um, making sure that I've got lots of ink on here. Right. So lots of people don't know that this is how these masks are designed. And I probably should have shown you what it looked like before I put this top piece on. So where the thicker pieces are, um, the soft sea foam is going to be lighter. Okay, so where those thick lines are. All right, and then the white space. So let's start taking it off. So once you take it off, you can see that it's got these lines. Okay, so the lines are very, very faint. Okay, this is, I hope you can see that. Right. So then, when you take it off completely, you end up with something. Oh, let's take that. Now, we better talk about cleaning your mask. So when you're doing, just using ink, I just grab, I've got, I haven't got baby wipes, I've just got some disinfectant wipes. Um, and I'm just gonna grab those and just wipe off the excess ink off the top and off the back and just let it dry, okay? Um, if I was using embossing paste, which I'm hopefully going to show you a little something with embossing paste, a little trick, um, I would dip them in it immediately I finished using the thing, put it in a bowl, a dish of warm soapy water to get the embossing paste off, to not let it dry, okay? All right. So, I don't know if you can see this. So we can take our little scrap of paper off the back. So this is got a double check on it. Can you see it? Like an extra check. Can you see that, Jade? Uh, Alright. 
So now we're going to start building a, that's going to be a, the base of our card. And I used a shimmery white just because I want to do some watercoloring on my bunnies. And I um, know that shimmery white is better for that. So we'll just stick that bit together. Okay. So you can do it in different colours. So you could do red and green for Christmas. So have... Um, like a um what's that color shaded spruce and real red or cherry cobbler like they're really lovely doing this check together and it looks like a tartan really an in more intricate tart tartan rather than just a little um grid okay yeah, stick that on. Yes, garden green and real red, they're good together. That definitely looks like a tartan, or even a green and a blue. Or a blue and a black on, no, a dark blue and a green on a light blue paper. So don't think that you can only use these masks on um, white or shimmery white you can use them on any color you like all right so um I'll just pop this on it's not very straight i've been up oh, i don't know for some reasons on tuesdays i get up really early hi doreen thanks for popping by i hope you're enjoying it make sure you say hello Okay, so that's our uh, soft sea foam base for our card. Let's quickly... Oh, hi, Glenda. Lovely to see you. Okay, so we've just done our first little mask. Um, and it's just... So I'm going to grab my Easter Bunny. That oh, one's really bad, and I didn't bring up my foam um piece for underneath my easter bunny but we'll wing it and see how it goes i know i did bring up a block right. yes we have a block that's a good start isn't it so i've got my easter bunny and that's from the easter bunny stamp set i've got a scrap of shimmery white so when I am cutting things up I normally um, you might have seen on a video a few weeks ago I normally um, cut all my card bases and then when I need to cut scraps and stuff I um, put them in little Ziploc bags and I store them all together so um, and label them because it's much easier to get a little bag like this and um, pick out your, your scraps and trying to go through a big 12 by 12 bag or a drawer or something. Hi Glenda S, lovely to see you. How's the weather up there um, Glenda L? I see you're where North Queensland's on cyclone watch. Okay, so see, I haven't even opened this. As I said, this is the first time I've used this set. So, I um, haven't, haven't opened the punch until today. So, it's really important to look at which way your punch goes. So, then you know whereabouts on your cardstock you need to position your stamp. All right. Um, so many times I'll put the stamp upside down or and then I've got to cut a bit off so okay so we're just gonna do a little rabbit here okay before I punch him out I'm going to grab some watercolor pencils okay I've got both sets and I've just put them in an extra wide 
What's well, okay being a bit late, Glenda? Oh. So um, oh, it's a little overcast and windy. Yeah, we're hoping it goes away for you too, Glendale. Oh. I'll be having, I'm crossing everything. Right, let's see what colours. No, I don't have a crumb cake watercolour pencil or a soft suede so I'm going to ditch that idea and luckily I bought my crumb cake ink upstairs all right I'm gonna grab my block dip it into my crumb cake ink and it just on one corner and then grab my wink of Stella and quickly I don't even know if you can see that. Quickly colour my little bunny in. And I'm not leaving a white tail. I'll just... Um, and I don't want to put my wink of Stella back on my ink block. But I've wiped it off with my finger. Because we don't want it to be sparkly. Okay. So, oops. Goodness me, having trouble colouring today. I'm just going to really roughly colour this. I'm not going to colour his tummy, just his... Um... Now, some people put their Wink of Stella on their ink pad. I wouldn't. <laughs> I really don't like that. I don't like that it makes my ink pad very, very shimmery. And I'm not worried too much that I'm not staying completely in the lines. Because bunnies, they have flyaway fur. It's a bit like my dog, really. She has flyaway fur. She actually has little spots on her where she, um, from where she had surgery, where the, she doesn't have a poodle coat anymore. She has golden retriever coat. So her fur has changed because of the impact of the surgeries so it's really quite cute she's got some tufts of golden retriever fur all over her body and it's not white either it's um gold so if it was white you wouldn't notice it but um we're hoping that that will go away with age now he looks a bit um mottly doesn't he i'm saying it's a he it's a non-gender specific bunny okay uh, okay okay so he's really roughly colored okay so i'll just clean off my brush now because Wink of Stella has alcohol in it, that'll be dry by the time I wipe off my block and go to punch, okay? Hi, Carol Lawrence. Lovely to see you again. I haven't seen you for hours. Thank you for your help today. All right, so let's have a look at our little bunny. I'm going to just quickly punch him out. He doesn't look too bad. He's very shimmery. So what I'm going to do is, because I went outside the lines, just as close as possible to the top line, I'm going to um, punch. So it might not look quite so bad. Yeah. All right. So that's our first bunny. So... We've got a little bit of, um, this is retired soft sea foam, and I've got a little bit of green as well. So he need, I think that he needs a little bit of a background to make him stand out. So um, just grab my trimmer and we're going to we know that our bunny is 
um, about two and a half inches wide so we're going to make it three inches and we know it's just over two inches tall so we're going to make it three by two okay or well, two and a half sorry oh, good. had trouble with numbers all day okay Now, if I just put my little bunny on here without oops, without anything else, it'd look a bit blur. So what we're going to do is we've got some grass in this stamp set, if I can find the stamp set. We've got some grass. So we're going to stamp a little bit of grass. And we might even stamp a carrot, maybe. So I'm using the one block tonight. Because I have to say that the one downside of having my filming upstairs is those stairs. <laughs> I really don't like them. Now, technically, I should have a, um, for better images, I should have my, um, a mouse pad or my piercing mat or something underneath this. But, um, my background has got some padding in it. So, I know it's got a little bit of give. Okay. So, the other thing we might put on here with our bunny and I am working trying to work fast so we might put a little carrot now I did bring my space on ink up here and so when you get this stays on ink this is um, what I, it has, it comes with a cover. So what I normally do is put the little, um, two little dimensionals to stick this cover inside. So what that does is it keeps your stays on um, better for longer. Um, obviously the dimensionals have come loose, but I'll just use my... Um, oh, thank you, Glenda. He's a modelly bunny. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, still young to climb stairs. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel very young, let me tell you. So we're going to just pop our little bunny here. Our little... Oh, that was a bit dry. Let's see. We'll try that again. I didn't re-ink this, so maybe we won't be using stays on. Let's see if that works. Uh, oh yeah, it worked. Okay, so that means that I need to re-ink my stays on stamp pad. Maybe next week I can talk to you about how re-inking stamp pads. Okay, I've got my watercolour pencil. So I've got pumpkin pie. The pumpkin pie is always a great carrot. So we're just going to colour him in. And it doesn't matter that we're colouring on a green. All right. We're going to give our carrot leaves a bit more colour. So they can be... So even though this is a primarily a monochromatic card it's got you can have little pops of other colors in okay now I've got my um, wink of Stella brush now you want to be really careful using this with stays on okay 
okay you don't want your stays on to run okay so I'm just gonna just gently try not to touch the black um, blend my carrot out I just want him to be a bit shiny and, and then I'll do the green on the carrot Okay. I'm not putting a sentiment on this. Yes. Well, you missed Carol. How do we do the background? But we'll do. We're doing another one, so I shall show you that. Okay, so we're going to. We might even turn our card around this way. Oh, that's a bit, a bit daring. Turning it around the side. I've got my dimensionals. I'm going to put a little bit of ribbon behind this. So I don't, I didn't bring my bow maker upstairs. So what I'm going to do, I didn't even bring my um, glue dots upstairs. Oh. So we're going to see if this works. It might not. Oh, use the other end. Just going to put a little bit. Now I've got this seam binding retired ribbon, and um, I'm just going to fold this on the back. Got a bit of glue. It might move around because of the glue. And now you don't have to always use ribbon to do a bow, right? And again, this is why I don't, there are downsides to having your filming space out of your studio. Okay. Now I was going to put dimensionals on it, but because I want to make sure that this ribbon doesn't move, I'm not going to. Okay. Oh, God. Ah, it's sticking to me. See, that's what not to do. Just fold that piece over. So I'm just going to have a bit of a loopy um, thing. And you've got, because you've got this gritty stuff in the background, that's sort of like a tartany sort of background, you can, how about we put some more glue on there? That would help. Oh, goodness. I shouldn't wake up at 4.30 in the morning and then on a Tuesday. Let's just say it. <laughs> Put a bit more glue there. Okay. I was thirsty when I woke up. So, I'll pop this here. And you might not like the way that I've done the ribbon and that's okay. This is just something to show you something different. Like I prefer bows, but I'm just thought it might be nice to have some loops of ribbon today. And that's also because my I forgot to put the ribbon on when I was layering it. That could be the other reason. All right, so we're going to pop lots and lots of um, dimensionals on here. And again, when you're taking the dimensionals backing off, you just put your, um, oh, thank you, Carol. I'm glad you like the loops. When Carol was here about four o'clock this afternoon, I hadn't even decided what um, I was doing tonight. So it was a mystery to me too. <laughs> so there we go. We've got our little bunny sitting on the grass. And if you wanted to have a sentiment on it, I would put the sentiment inside. That's just me. You could add butterflies or whatever, but I think that's just uh, enough. But what we will do is we will add, if I can find it, or will we? No, we were going to add some bling to this one, but it's gone walkabout, so. Oh, yes, we were. We're going to add a little butterfly bling just to 
change things up a little bit. So that's a little butterfly gleam here. And I think that just makes it a little bit different. I have three little butterflies. We'll have one on this carrot here. one over here in this bit of white space so as you can see when I've put my odd number on I've actually done them in a triangle shape and that's um, one of the design principles of that sort of gardening is using triangles and um, and a lot of design using a lot of triangles and when you are designing a kitchen or a, a workspace you look at that triangle of how you work as well so that's why I generally when I'm doing things like this I'll do that all right so that's our first little card we're going to um <laughs> we're going to grab our other masks all right so again we've got at this time I've got some balmy blue now, I'm not going to forget this time to um, put my ribbon on before I stick it together. I've got my two masks, and these are from that um, artistic decorative mask set. So, first up, like we did before, just turn my grid paper around is I'm going to put a bit of masking tape, not too sticky, on the back of my shimmery white. So, and I'm going to turn my paper over So, because I don't want the green that was on that side to transfer onto my project. Because what the blending brush does is it picks up the colour around it. So, alright, so that's a, another helpful hint for using that. So we use a new piece of masking tape and so what I'm going to do is this corner here I'm going to line it up with the bottom corner of my card right Put a bit of masking tape across the top not covering the cardstock obviously and try and keep it straight so sometimes it's easier just to put the masking tape on first, like this, right? and then put it in place. Okay, so I want to know that I've got these cut off edges along the side of, and these cut off edges along the bottom line up with the very edge and bottom edge of my card. Okay, so this time we're doing balmy blue. So this is, I'll use my light blue friending brush, um, the blending brush. And I'm just going to pop a bit more masking tape down the bottom here. It doesn't cover the cardstock because my cardstock only goes to here. Um, but I just don't want it to move. And it's pretty important that it doesn't move. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is grab... Actually, I did that the wrong way around. <gasps> That's no good. It's not going to work if I do it that way. Hang on one second. Let's get my other mask. Start again. But thankfully, I remembered, I realised what I was doing wrong before I got too far. So I'm just going to grab this piece of masking tape. Line this one up. So this is like a quatrefoil pattern. I'm just going to stick that on the top. Again, we're doing a um, sort of monochrome pattern. All right, so I've got my light blue. Okay. 
and I'm going to just, I don't want it too dark, I just want to um, have it just dark enough, right? Gently blend that. Yeah. So, oh, one of the things I need to talk to you about is I've got raffle tickets on sale for um, our retreat. And I wanted to do a big shout out to um, Carolyn Willis, who is a friend of, a stamping friend of Vicky and mine, who kindly donated some prizes for our raffles mystery stamping oh sorry mystery envelopes okay um so the mystery envelopes are only available for the people who attend the event but the raffle tickets are on sale and you can get a raffle ticket from for three dollars each from vicky or myself vicky keller or myself and um, right up until the 25th um, and they'll be available on the day for people who, who are attending and there are lots of great prizes i did a video a couple of days ago there's apparel there's um i was stamping up branded apparel there's um i'm making this a lot darker than what i've intended um there are uh, stamps new and retired stamps and there's ink and all sorts of things so um, tools there's a stamp apparatus um so carolyn did up some lovely little packs for us so this is what our um background looks like right so we've done our our little i've got a bit of few blotchy bits but that's okay um i'm saying that that's like a pantina look so now let's make this a bit more interesting we've stuck it back down exactly the way it was before we're going to grab our other mask and we're going to line that up so that it is and you can do it underneath Sometimes it works better when you do it underneath. So we're just going to lift this piece up again. I'm going to line this piece up. So that is in the middle of the quatrefoil. Now you can do it this way, but we might not do it this way. We might just line it up at the bottom and the side. So if you're the, they're the same size mask. So if you line those two edges up here you're going to have it in the right place okay now you can do this with embossing paste too and the embossing paste you can even color that oh you haven't seen this done oh um these are this is how they're designed to work glenda so um so if i was wanted to i could use embossing paste here to just color in those center bits so these aren't going to be heaps darker oh, i should have bought another colored ink pad up but it's going to work okay now, not all masks work like this but you can make you can make things work however you want it you know now so this one here right down the bottom is not quite dark enough so we're going to Let's do that a bit darker. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to coffee, cake and cards tomorrow. Um, I think that it's um, going to be a great morning. I think we're fully booked out. Um, might need a bigger table, actually. 
I love coffee cake and cards. So here we go. So let's take off our first mask. So you can see it's got a, lo a lovely little pattern. And then when you take off, oh, this is so cool. When you take off the second mask, ta-da! It's like you've got tiles with, with a pattern on it. So I'm grabbing my, um, let's move that out of the way. I'm gonna grab my um, disinfectant wipe and just wipe off the ink. And, and you wipe it off both sides. So I do the wrong side first and then the right, the back side first and then the right side. Okay, I'm not taking, I'm wiping my masking tape off because I will use that one again. Okay, and I don't want to waste another piece of masking tape. All right, let's see. We need another bunny, don't we? So, I didn't bring any other colours up. But before we do our bunny, we're going to attach these two bits together. Right. And we're going to add some, we're going to take this piece of um, masking tape off and we're going to save that for our next bit. Where, well, I do know I've got like 10 packs on the table downstairs. Uh, I might have to like have a little um, craft supply tray up here in the in this office. Okay, so we're going to use some um, of the balmy blue. Um, ribbon I might just put it about a third of the way down and because I don't have my um, glue dots I'm relying on glue which I'm not sure how that's going to work with the ribbon but we'll give it a go I don't even have my sharp scissors up here my ribbon scissors are on the table too because we've been doing lots of prep today so um, cutting ribbon and all sorts of things so you can see I've got grid paper here so I want it to be about the third of the way up so I'm just using my grid li lines on my grid paper whoops which is wonky um, to stick my ribbon down I'll put a bit of glue behind that okay so whoops stay in place it's being facetious Now I'm going to have ink glue all over me. Let's work quickly. I'm all fingers and thumbs today. I should really yell out to Steve and get him to bring me up some um, some glue dots, but we'll just. You'll get the idea. All right, I'll fix this when it's with some glue dots later. I'll just use my scissors and chuck it under. That's probably a bit more than a third. So oh, you're probably thinking, why is she doing a Facebook Live video when she can't even stick a piece of ribbon on? Oh. All right. 
there we go all right so we got the ribbon thanks journey for the reminder <laughs> i didn't forget all right so now we want to put our little bunny on we might use a different bunny and we might just do it on a piece of shimmery white Mm, yes. So I'm just going to cut that. Yes, I will, Jodie. I've got lots of wipes. And um, I hate glue. I really do. But I, I really struggle with this um, Seal Plus and Seal at the moment. Um, the humidity, for some reason, I find it makes it difficult to use. Okay, so we're all cleaned off. My piece of cardstock's trying to run away. And it keeps, yeah, it's not working the way that it should be. So I'm using glue, but I don't, re I'm not a huge fan. Now. I think that that might be straight. That's Maybe not exactly straight. It's hard to see. And I'm sort of winging this. So I've got my um, my blending brush. So I know that I've got lots of ink on the edge of it. So I'm just going to just go around the edges of my paper. And if I could find my piece of scrap. Let's just go in the middle here. Let's go around the edge just to make it look. Now see my um, mask must have been very dirty from the previous time. I mustn't have washed it properly. Okay. So we're gonna grab another bunny. I think that this bunny is super, super cute. This one's sitting here like this. So, we're sort of doing like a no-line watercolouring with this. Now, I only bought one block up, so we'll grab these bunny pieces over here so they're ready to be cleaned so we're going to cut our bunny really well I used a soft suede this time I'm just using the crumb cake oh how did we get that that by with it before baby wipes were invented I have no clue Glenda um I think my I was always going to use cloth nappies and washes and yeah and when my daughter was born and I discovered that if she used, if we used, um, disposable nappies, she would sleep through the night at 10 weeks. I'm like, after 10 weeks of sleep deprivation, I was all for disposable nappies at night. I just couldn't cope. <laughs> I don't know. You have all these good intentions until reality sits in, I think. But that was 20 years ago too. And, um, and I think when you're working as well, it changes. You, you have to do things to have quick wins, I think. 
All right, so we've got our shimmery bunny. He's very shimmery. He'd look better if he had a bit of pink on him, wouldn't he? He, her, I don't know. I'm just gonna really lightly colour his face. Just with the dregs of the... Really lightly colour it under his feet. We don't want too much colour, but we want just enough. see that he's there and we've got our watercolour pencils up here so we can put a little bit of pink on him her there we go it's very cute bunny all right so we'll just wipe off our watercolour uh, our wink of stella um the reason i like wink of stella so much is that it just is um, so easy to use. Now we've got a bit of pink. So I like it when bunnies have a little bit of pink on them. So I'm just going to grab my Mella Mambo watercolour pencils. So this is from one of the first assortment of watercolour pencil. And we'll just do a little bit of Mellow Mambo. Probably needs to be sharpened, that pencil. Now, I always keep a pencil sharpener with my um, watercolour pencils so that it's nice and sharp. And we'll do a little bit here. Now you don't need to do too much pink because your water your wink of Stella now that we've wiped that off will push the pink around and I'm going to use some of that pink on the end of his nose as well. And if you need a bit more pink, just get your pencil. Because bunnies have pink noses. My friend took her bunny from, her pet bunny from Melbourne. They've moved to New Zealand. And so she's got a pet bunny in New Zealand. How cool is that? I didn't think that she would be allowed to take Peppa, but she did. And I'm really happy for her because but poor Peppa had to go through all this quarantine and had to have his own passport and everything. Mm -hmm. oh, when your grandkids came on, you didn't know how to use a disposable nappy. Oh dear. Oh. And then what? you don't go back, Glenda, after you've done it. Okay, so we're, our bunny is starting to come together. We're going to use our, put a bit of grass around the bunny. And how about we put a couple of Easter eggs as well. Now, as I said before, the um, strays on really needs some re-inking, but there's a, enough to get by tonight. So we'll, but first up, we'll put our grass on, which we're going to do in that soft sea foam, because that's the one that's on my desk. Actually, and we will, what we will do is we'll stamp our, um, our bunny. Uh, our Easter eggs, sorry, in um, blue. 
so we won't even need to use that stays on ink that's a bit dodgy today. Oh, I used Cabbage Patch clothes for them. Oh, goodness, Jodie. I must have been little. My nephew, who was, or great nephew, who was born just before Christmas, he's recently graduated to, sorry, he was born at the end of November. He's graduated to 4 O clothes. Actually, I think he's up to 3 O now. He was 6 O when he was born, and it's, um, it's pretty cool. We're all excited for him. He's had a couple of stints in hospital, but he's doing really well now. So I'm going to just put it. I think this bunny needs lots of Easter eggs. Whoops, I didn't stamp that right. If I was using my Stamparatus, I would be easily able to see that. But I've just stamped over it again, so it's a bit shadowed, but I'm going to put one little extra egg up here just because I want an odd number of eggs oh. he's doing really well Jody he really is he has been in hospital a couple of times but where um, he's home at the moment and his mum's been in hospital a couple of times and she's home at the moment so life is good we're happy that they're here Okay, so let's just colour in our little little eggs. We're going to do them. And really, I have no idea what time it is. So um, I think it's just after eight. So we're doing it. Okay. Um, but I did want to show you one last thing with masking, but it won't be making a card. I'll just show you. Run outside the lines. Well, this one we're going to. And even though that when I didn't, when I re-stamped this, I went outside the lines, it doesn't really matter. Um, because It just adds to it, I think. So this one here, I know that it's going to be a bit checky. And this one here. Checky as well, and I messed that up, but that's all right. All right, so we've got our little bunnies, and we've got all right. Okay, so we can put our bunny on here. I think that that will be all right. We'll pop him on with some dimensionals. Again, I'm not using a sentiment today because I don't know. I, I want to put a sentiment inside, closer to the to Easter. It's got some great sentiments in the set, but um, I'm just not sure which one I want to use. So sentiments and bling can always be added later. Okay, so don't think when you make a card that you have to. Put the sentiment in straight away or um and a lot of the time i don't put sentiments in the side of my cards until i'm about to give them and it's probably when they're the people are turning up on my doorstep that i write the card mm. oh. yeah oh 27 weeks jody oh, um right it was a little bit later than that but that um, he was about two weeks early, but he had a very hard start. All right. Now, we do need to add some bling to this. I've got, these were I carried over from the um, mini catalogue that was around in that, well, August to 
December mini catalog, July to December mini catalog. Oh, goodness. I'm just going to put a few little things on here. I'm going to cover that up there so it doesn't look quite so bad. So, and although I am using, um, the four dement things in the corners, I'm actually going to use another three so that I've got an odd number. Okay. So I'm going to put two on this one and one up here. Alright. And he probably needs one of those butterflies too. Let's put a butterfly on there. So it's an odd number of butterflies as well. Let's put a butterfly up on his ear. There we go. So there we go. So that is our second card. Now, I think I like the first one better, but I wanted to show you something really quickly to do with masking while I've got my masks out. All right, so we'll just get rid of this piece of that paper and I'll bring in a piece of, um, I did have a piece, a piece of baking paper. I did have a piece of that up here. Maybe not. So I've got embossing paste. Just find the embossing tape. I've got a ring inker. Oh, the other thing with these masks is, is they have these bits here which you can um, are the negatives to those so you can use those. Alright. I've got a little ziploc -y bag and I don't know where that baking paper went. Oh, it's fallen down behind the back of my desk. Alright. We're going to straighten out that little, um, this little scrap paper. Normally I would use baking paper, but I can't reach the, um, baking paper. Um, so I'm using my scrap paper again. I've got a tool for, um, oh, this is dreadful. I have a tool for my embossing paste, but you could use an old credit card or something. So you get two types of embossing paste, right? You've got a shimmery white and a white. We're going to use the white. Oh, actually, no, we're going to use the shimmery white. We're going to use our mask. All right. And I'm just going to use... For demonstration purposes, a, um, actually let's use, I'm going to use some other masks that we have. These are the loveliest layer decorative masks. Right. Now these are from the new mini catalogue. Again, I haven't opened these, so they could be awful, but I don't think so. I'm hoping that they're not. So these are really interesting. So what they are is different parts of a flower, right? You've got leaves, you've got other bits. We're going to use these two bits of the flower. So you've got your center of your flower and you've got your other bit, right? That's the right way sort of got to work out how the pattern might go that looks about the right way when they layer right so again they're designed to layer I don't know where I put my tool oh, I've, today I've got lost so much stuff you can use your oh here it is you, it was the same colour as my basket you can use your um, 
bone folder for this, but I wouldn't, okay? First up, going to put my bit of paper down and I've got a bit of masking tape attached to the back, right? I've got my first mask. I'm going to use my big one. Now, because my paper is um, it's going to be cut down, so I'm not particularly worried about the edges, right? So I'm just going to put a bit of tape at the top, hold it on. It'll be cut later, so um, let's put it over the side there. The first thing I can do is I've got this little zip locky bag. I'm going to grab my shimmery white embossing paste, and you don't need much. Keep this little bit out of the top, um, right. and keep your foil on it. Um, I know some people still keep their, I need to get some more, um, their shimmery, their embossing paste in a plastic bag as well, right? So this is probably all that you'll need, this tiny bit. Pop it in your ziploc -y bag, right? Just like that, wipe it in. You probably need a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more because we're doing two layers with it. Um, you do have a little bit of waste when you do this. When you're not using it, just Quickly put your foil back on. I'll spread the foil out. Mine's. Oh, I'm gonna have it all over my hands. Story of my life. It's all over my hands. All right. Pop your foil back on, and then seal it tight. All right. Do not let the air get to it. Use your baby wipes or your. As I said, I'm using disinfectant wipes. Wipe off your hands. All right. Um, the reason I use baking paper behind this is because um, it's got a bit of a coating. So I've got an Orchid Oasis reinker. So this was just the first one that I grabbed. So I don't know how it will look on Barbie Blue. And in my little ziploc -y bag, I'm going to put one drop, just one. Right, put the lid back on your ink reinker, zip up your ziplocky bag, and start working your colour through. Now you could do this on a piece of acetate. The reason I do it in a ziplocky bag is uh, or a window sheet or whatever, I do it in here because I don't um, want to waste the my acetate really and you'll see that it changes the color right so you don't need a lot and you're just going to scrape that off and spread it, start spreading it over your flower you only need a thin layer right and it doesn't matter if it's a bit, it's not um, completely the, the right colour. Uh, like it's not completely mixed. I think that's what I was trying to say. So, so this is just so cool. So if you're doing a 3D, uh, like a, a project, and you want to add some texture, this is fantastic. The other thing you can do with this embossing paste and the mask is that you can add so sand to it. Like I don't do it with the shimmery white, but I do it with the white. Just add sand or dirt if you're doing um, sort of a beach theme. Now I've used this one. I'm just scraping, so I've probably scraped a bit much off. So I'll just go back over and go that way. So 
I want to make sure that there's no air bubbles. All right. So now, this one here needs a little bit more. So, has anyone, has everyone seen this before? I'm sure you have. Okay, I'm sure you've seen this before. Okay, I can't wait, Glenda. Ah. Now, I don't have my heat tool up here, but you could, um, if you had a heat tool, um, what happens when you heat your embossing paste is it puffs up but you don't need to heat it like you can so I've got this piece here I know that it's gonna go like this on top right oh, we're just gonna place that on the top and I get a bit more masking tape right just gonna secure that down. I love doing this, it's lots of fun. That's not gonna move. Um, and I need a little bit more embossing paste. So I'm gonna wipe off the colour of this one. Right, see I, if you don't clean your tools straight away, when you use a color, it gets stuck, right? And it, you have to scrape it off, right? Um, so I wanted to show you what happens if you don't wash it. You have to actually scrape it. Cause this, this stuff sets rock hard, right? We get a little bit more embossing paste, not too much. Put that in our ziploc -y bag. Might just do a little bit more. I want to be quite generous with this next layer. Okay. Okay, so I've got my um, Orchid Oasis reinker. Now remember, we already had a drop in there. So we're going to put another two drops in. Okay. Again, zip up your zip locky bag. Like you could just do it on it with a piece of cling wrap, or you could do it on a bit of baking paper. That's do, but um, don't try and do it on your project. It doesn't work well, and you can just move your embossing paste around in your um, bag and sort of push it all up towards the top so you'll see it's much darker this time so we've got some rogue embossing paste over there so it's sort of like toothpaste and you can even get your tool and use that just be careful you don't put a hole in the bag. The th reason I use little ziplocky bags is because of the cleanup too. And if I don't use it all, I can store it. So I'm just going to, again, keep massaging that colour in. So do we like this so far? You haven't seen this? Yeah, there is less mess. I am so not into mess although it, um, sometimes I Steve goes how can one person be so messy <laughs> okay so again we're just gonna and we're putting this on quite thick this time okay. but normally what I do is I do a thin layer first a thinner layer first and if it's not dark enough, you can add a bit more re -inker. So it's, I don't think that that's quite dark enough. I'll just push it back in there. Add a bit more re -inker. And because this is shimmery um, embossing paste, 
it's going to, oops, I didn't mean to add three drops. It's going to um, have a beautiful sparkle at the end. And the colour card stock that you um, use it on also dictates how it turns out. So I will put a bit on a scrap of shimmery white so you can see what it would look like on the shimmery white. So I'm just moving that colour around. Um, cling wrap isn't ideal for using doing this in because um, you it ten, it's thinner and it tends to break. Okay, so this is a deeper colour now. So let's just put this in the centre. Yes, that's a nice colour now. Now, what you want to be really mindful of is as soon as this video finishes, I will be going and washing these masks, right? Because I need to get this uh, as well as wiping them with the um, disinfectant wipes. Oops, went off the edge, but that's okay. It's going to be cut down um, because I need to get this embossing paste off my mask before it sets. All right, are we ready for the big reveal? I'll do a drum roll. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we see here we've got a little bit of it. So you can see the two different colours. Right. Is this perfect? No, not at all. The first time I use this mask. So um, I'm winging it like you. But see how it looks. It looks. The two different colours on there. So it's not white anymore. So we'll just, um, I'll show you what it looks like on a bit of white. So you can see how the coloured, the purple coloured cardstock, or the blue coloured cardstock actually changes the look also. See, it gives it more of a blue tinge. So what I could do is I could go back and do that layer again I'm okay with that I'll just get a bit of um, orchid opulence ink and put that in there so I hope you like that little um, trick about coloring um, your embossing paste it's really really a good thing to do like I mean, you can have lots of fun with it. I did a canvas with it recently and it it turned out really well. I'm not allowed to share it with you yet, but it turned out so great and I'm so happy that it um, worked the way it did. So I will put this on a card now. Okay. And I think that um, doing the two different layered masks is really fun. But doing this embossing paste mask is so much fun. Let's see if I can wipe that off. Oh, not without wrecking it. That's all right. We will sort that out later. Okay, so there we go. So that's our class for tonight. Sorry, it's taken a little bit longer than normal. But I really hope that you enjoyed the project, the two projects, which let's have a look at those again. We've got our two bunnies with the um, layered masks. And um, then a little example with the embossing paste. Yeah, did I say embossing paste? Oh, embossing powder. Yeah. Oh, you need to get, Jodie, you'll need to get some embossing powder, uh, sorry, embossing paste. Get some shimmery white for your um, retreat projects. That will be something a little extra that you'll need that um, to do one, one of Vicky's projects. Okay, so make sure you put your order in and get some embossing paste. 
um, I thought you might have some, but you might have a friend that you can share a jar with. Now, it does go off and it does go hard, okay? And that's why we keep it sealed and you um, make sure that you um, are cleaning it up really quickly and so like I'm gonna have glitter everywhere but it's worth it all right all right everyone have a great week and a great evening I'll see some of you at coffee cake and cards tomorrow and the rest of you I might see next Tuesday on our Facebook live um, and we I think next week we might do a tic-tac-toe challenge I, I don't know tell me what you want to see um you might want to see some more embossing paste i don't know let's see let me know until next time happy creating